um, <laughs> that uh, it's 19.2 miles from my house uh, down uh, Route 301. From, and it's a beautiful place. It's kept, and I might point out a local note, uh, one of the things that you may is an advantage or disadvantage, you can't have graveside ceremonies, which many people have. That, that's something that they don't permit. You can't have a ceremony in the chapel. And we're very proud and buoyed to you know the chapel at Cheltenham is named for the late Senator Edward T. Conroy, who represented this area in the General Assembly for many, many years. And I thought the grave liners were provided by the state. Uh, I remember a few years ago, Charlie Blumenthal had that bill. Some of you may remember the grave liners yeah. bill. The, the grave liners are provided by the state under contract, but the uh, federal government does revert, reimburse the state for the uh, veterans uh, grave liners. Because I know when the bill passed, uh, Speaker John Hanson Briscoe didn't care much for Charlie Blumenthal who sponsored the bill. And um, he said, well, I guess I'll go along with his bill if Charlie will promise me that he'll be the first person to use it. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, Pat, uh, the cemetery visiting is, is 365, 365 days a year, isn't it? That is, that is correct. Right. It's, uh, each cemetery is open every day of the year, and uh, they open at, uh, at least by 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they do close promptly at 5 o'clock, however, and uh, there's always somebody on site there that can answer questions, look up uh, grave locations, and uh, assist with anybody that might need assistance that's visiting. One thing that I've noticed that... Uh, a lot of times, uh, because of the shortfall, some of the budget, they, they didn't want to have anybody there on the weekends, or, I mean on the holidays, and a lot of the veterans groups has volunteered to stand the duty there on, the, on Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving in order to give the employees time off and, and still where the, the uh, families can still come and visit on the holidays. That's correct. We have a, a, a lot of help uh, from... Um Actually, veter veterans commissioners and uh, other uh, other service groups that uh, <coughs> will help throughout the year if if needed. Uh, but there uh, generally should be a uh, a state employee in that cemetery while it's open, just uh, in case there's uh, an issue that comes up or a, uh, a problem. It is a beautifully kept, particularly Cheltenham. I'm, I'm more familiar with, uh, right. and and I think uh, Crownsville is <coughs> the only two I've been to. They are, they are beautifully well kept, and you people deserve a great deal of credit for the care that sometimes cemeteries, uh, they promise you a lot of things and don't deliver. Even at places like Arlington Cemetery, we've had scandals with uh, headstones for veterans. But uh, this, uh, and, and what, uh, you, get, you, get a, you get a stone for the, and the stones are flat, aren't they? they That's correct. Yeah. Uh, in our system, we, uh, the federal government does provide the uh, flat granite marker in our system, and each cemetery has a flat granite marker. For How are the stones area. marked, Pat? Uh, they are uh, actually carved and uh, sent to us. It's uh, engraved granite. Uh, includes the uh, veteran's uh, first and last name, uh, date of birth, date of death, uh, the branch of the service, and uh, a possibility of a small inscription in there. Like, uh, uh, like decorations or honors you receive, like medals, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, that's possible, yeah. Uh, Purple Heart. And, yeah. Probably the rank, too. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I know we've been to a number of services right. at various places, uh, both there at, uh, you know, Cheltenham yeah. and uh, the one in Crownsville. And, you know, it's always been, you know, very well done, and then the staff yeah. there has been extremely helpful. Yeah, we're all very proud of the cemetery program. I think that's fair to say. No, I had uh, my uncle as, was a Marine in World War II, and he's buried, and my aunt is buried at Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. And when my uncle passed, they provided a Marine Honor Guard, and we had a beautiful chapel service. And when my son-in-law passed, he's a U.S. Army Vietnam veteran. Mm -hmm. He's in Crownsville, and the Army did the same thing. And I believe the cemetery program or the funeral director, one or the other, makes arrangements for, for these wonderful honors that they do give. Right. Uh, each uh, is the responsibility of uh, actually the uh, uh, family of the uh, veteran that's being interred to make arrangements for uh, honors. Uh, they can do that easily through the funeral homes. They all have the contact information. And... Uh, in most cases, uh, the branch of the service uh, is available to come out and do honors. Uh, if that's not possible, 
we have uh, available the uh, uh, Maryland National Guard Honor Guard that uh, will come out and uh, do the uh, uh, military honors and the playing of taps. I know the Marine Corps League, uh, in several instances, they will. They were they were asked to, to go and do the mm -hmm. service whenever it was hard, especially these times with the, with the military budget constraints. It's very hard sometimes to get a bugler or a honor guard. The uh, the services will let, will will let us go. Out. How do you get the forms, Pat? I've forgotten. It's been so long since I got mine. Okay, uh, now <coughs> uh, with the computer age here, certainly you can uh, you can go online to the uh, department's website, which is. Uh, MDVA, Maryland Department of Veterans Affairs, mdva.state.md for Maryland.us. And uh, you can uh, check around on the website there and uh, under uh, burial benefits, uh, there, the forms are available there and you can uh, print one off and either send it to any one of the uh, cemeteries with your uh, military history record or you can uh, contact one of the cemeteries and they'd be happy to send one to you. And uh, you can mail it back or you can visit the cemetery and uh, that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, each one of our superintendents is uh, qualified to review your, uh, assuming they have uh, time when you come in, to review your application on the spot and make a determination if you're eligible to be buried or not. And it'd be good to have your DD-214 with you. Right. Uh, bring that you with require you. that, don't you? The, you we know. do. Now, um, what, you say, uh, say that a person, like I came in in Pennsylvania and uh, although I lived in Maryland when I was uh, when I was retired, and I really don't know if there's anything on my TD-214 that says I'm Maryland because they always put home of record on there. But I've been been a resident of Bowie for 40 years. Uh, what would we, what would be good? A tax form or um, what, right. what, what kind? Wouldn't of the form itself be enough if right. you've gotten pre-approval? I can't uh, remember. They made me do something to show. Okay, uh, I mean, it's 25 years ago, probably. If you uh, have your DD-214, it uh, we go by the home of record, and if it says uh, your home of record is uh, somewhere in Maryland, you're good to go. That's uh, you're you're clear for the rest of your uh, life. If, you, however, if there's uh, you're applying and uh, you do not have a home of record in Maryland, uh, you can use a, a, a current driver's license. You can use uh, tax records for your residential property. Um, you can actually, you can use a, uh, if you had a draft card, you could use that if it was current, but uh, uh, there's uh, actually several ways to qualify and prove you're a resident. You can use uh, current uh, utility bills within three months of your, uh, your passing. Now you said there's 160,000 plots and 70,000 have been already accounted for. Yes. Um, is there a projection as to when the, uh, the department thinks these, the, the 160,000 will actually be filled up? Well, actually it's a continually uh, changing uh, number. Uh, we just went through a, an expansion at uh, three of our cemeteries, Crownsville, uh, Cheltenham, and Garrison Forest, and uh, we are going to uh, put columbariums in at the two other cemeteries. And uh, when that uh, happens, uh, it'll be time to start the uh, development of new sites at each cemetery over again. Uh, what, when I'm talking the 160,000 spaces, that's maximum predictable space with the acreage we have available. Uh, they're not all developed. And uh, mm -hmm. as we need them, we keep developing them. Yeah, we see the trees get cut down and, you know, uh, that sort of stuff to make room. Right. As, as you're doing the clearing. Mm -hmm. um, we talked a lot about cemeteries. Were, are memorial programs a little different or how does that? Well, the uh, state uh, also has uh, three actual uh, memorials for the uh, veterans of our past wars. We have a, uh, the first uh, one that was uh, developed was uh, the uh, Maryland Vietnam Veterans Memorial, which is in Baltimore at the uh, intersection of Hanover Street and Waterview. And uh, that's an approximately a, a five acre site on the waterfront there. And uh, that's to uh, honor our uh, veterans from uh, that conflict. Uh, we have there uh, everybody that was uh, passed away during that conflict uh, uh, noted on the uh, uh, tablets on the memorial. And